Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales of the Space. Space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. The Mad Butchers of Terror. Written by Vincia Ort Mariah. They are mad, I tell you. All of them. Lunatic monsters from your worst nightmares. And the stoutest allies. The most compassionate friends you have ever known. All rolled into one. We learned that during the war. But too late. Far, far too late. The Montral were the first species to form. Their brood worlds were the closest occupied planets to the Sol system at the outbreak of the war. When the first counter attack came, the Prime Minister of the Montral Union had sworn that not one living Terran would ever touch the surface of the Montral world. In the end, that oath was upheld. The Montral flung themselves at the foe, spending the lives of the indomitable legions in their countless thousands to defend their brood worlds. The Terran capital ships never even entered the system. They disdained the elegant, maneuvering ballet of the void combat, for which the Montral cruisers had been designed. The Butchers of Terror had simply turned their broadsides towards the oncoming waves and pumped volley after volley into the Montral ships. It was an ugly sight to watch, even on the footage from the reconnaissance drones, as the Montral ships, each a triumph of engineering, were blasted apart by cataclysmic barrages from the ugly slabs of steel and void shielding that constituted the Terran fleet. In nearly a standard galactic year of fighting, the only Allied victory during the whole of the Montrol Offensive occurred on the outskirts of the Montrol home system. The battle had raged for seven standard rotations without cessation, and by the end, not a single Terran capital ship existed within striking range of Montrol Prime. The Grand Home Fleet of the Montrol Union still proudly patrolled its home system, all three remaining ships of it, at least. Analysis and reconnaissance footage recovered after the battle suggested that the Terran ships had simply run out of ammunition before the Montrol had run out of ships. The Terrans never needed to set foot by its side. They simply crippled the Montrol. Montrol ships were hunted down and eradicated. Their factories raised and their spaceports reduced to rubble with a chilling, systematic efficiency. The Montral Union remained technically unconquered. They simply had no capacity to resist, and the Terrans ran their supply lines through the heart of the sovereign, hostile nation, as safe and sound as if they were cruising their native solar system. The Velaxians, by contrast, were not an ancient, well-established interstellar empire like the Montral Union. Rather, They'd been a young species just grasping beyond their home system at the outbreak of the war. Their technology had advanced considerably by their entrance to the Allied Pact near the end of the Montrol Offensive. But it had taken time to retrofit into their existing systems. That time might have been granted, if not for the plague. A virus, common enough to the galactic community as a whole, but unknown on Valax mutated itself enough to attack the Valaxian biology. The virus crippled Valax before the war had really begun. Valax was left practically defenseless as the Allied Pact scrambled to form in the wake of the Montrol defeat. Unable to defend themselves, what was left of the Valaxian High Command surrendered without ever firing a shot. The Terrans did land on Valax. Armies of them, legions poured from carrier fleets, Vulcan and Bacchus. These were not legions of soldiers, but healers. Entire battalions of doctors, nurses, surgeons, and battlefield medics came to the aid of the Valaxian people. It took nearly half of the Valaxian orbits to find a vaccine, but eventually one was found and the Grand Matriarch of Valax swore from her sickbed in a broadcasted message to her entire people, undying friendship with the healers of terror. It was the fate of the Romo Norellians that chilled the blood of every sentient species in the galaxy. 
had it been the Romo Norallians that had started the war. At the height of their power, they were the mightiest nation amongst the stars, an entity to be feared. Then they found the Sol system. Nine planets ranged round the small yellow star, hosting a minor species of native bipedal sapiens, with a bare handful of colonies on neighboring moons and a single colony on a second world. Under intergalactic law, the Romanoralians were well within their rights to lay claim to any system whose native inhabitants had not achieved FTL travel or established a colony outside their native system. The initial incident wasn't even an attack. The outermost colony established by the Terrans up to that point was on a small, barren world, the fourth from their star. With high concentration of iron and very little indigenous water, the Roman Aurelian colony ship entered high orbit, discharging its small complement of soldiers to gather any available biomass in the immediate area to supplement the ship's stores, and commenced terraforming the planet below. The process was considered a success by the Roman Aurelians and a non-issue for the rest of the galaxy. There was a small sortie by the local fleet, but the enemy ships were of such a primitive design that they were no real threat. The engagement would have been almost bloodless for the Roman Aurelian side, except that a cadet who had been allowed to pilot a strike craft during the engagement made a mistake. He attempted a showy maneuver and collided with one of the Terran vessels, sending them both spinning into the void. The incident was logged as an acceptable loss, and the colony ship went back to terraforming the intended world it was not until a full solar orbit later that the consequences of that struggle became all too clear. Ships, dozens of ships appeared from out of the light of the sun, bearing down on the unsuspecting colony ship. The battle, such as it was, was over before the would-be Roman Aurelian colonists could wake up. Their ship was surrounded and blasted apart, without even giving the Roman Aurelians a chance to plead for mercy. The surviving tech from the colony ship was soon assimilated into the newly forged Terran fleet, just as the salvage strike craft had to be. Then the mad butchers of Terra went hunting. The Montrell hadn't been a target, just a proud ancient empire that stood between Terra and Romano. The Terrans asked for the right of way through their territory when the foolish Montrell attacked the Balaxians were inconsequential, but the mad butchers who could slaughter millions in the grip of the cold, righteous wrath could not bear the terrified sobs of a sick child. After Valax, the galaxy watched in horrified confusion as the same fleet that crippled an empire and saved a species from extinction bore down on Romano. The destruction was absolute not merely content in extracting a toll in recompense for what they called the Massacre of Mars. The fleets of terror butchered their way through the mightiest battle fleet in the galaxy, stopping as they did to wipe every inhabited world clean of life. Horrifying as they were, these atrocities were merely an overture to a symphony of destruction that was to come. The home system of the Roman Aurelian Empire was blasted apart, inhabited world by inhabited world, and the debris of thirteen planets was flung by tractor beams at the Roman Aurelian home planet. The message broadcast from the Admiral of the Fleet Jupiter proclaimed, The adversary is destroyed, the last of their empire used to obliterate the cradle of their monstrous race. Maybe the war could have ended there, the Terrans had got it their revenge. They had no more desire to fight. If only we had known that then. Terrified by the unexpected display of raw ferocity, the galaxy united in horror to destroy the sons and daughters of terror. It didn't work. Species after species either fell or surrendered for the inexorable might of terror. Those that allied with her live unmolested within their own territory, prospering by trade and peaceful collaboration. Those that resisted have been ground into dust of history. How, I ask you, can one creature be both either, I could understand, but both bloodthirsty conqueror and peaceful ally? 
They must be mad. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click and click with energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just want to give a quick thanks to the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia, Barky, Fudik Yol, Cam Maxwell, Casper Onholtz, White Band 420, Lord Asrakal, Arcalian, and Oakfield.